survivors are very lonely people. Our children are away in different towns. Our grandchildren are away in different places. They lived to tell about the horrors. There's a lot of bad memories. Now, decades after the end of the Holocaust, isolation for many survivors... So we're getting colder and it's getting harder. ...is a painful part of life. I, could, I cannot take care now for myself. It's hard for me to take a shower, I'll tell you the truth. This is my medicine there. Well, it's very complex. Their issues are complex. Their needs are complex. And um, all of those things are thrown on top of the needs of many aging people. Those are my grandparents. Adjusting to loss, and of course, their history of having dealt with loss. They were killed in Treblinka. Surpasses probably anybody else's. This is a real... Uh, many survivors are very reluctant to deal with authorities because their experience with authority is with the Nazis. and. Authority is bad, and, um, and, and, and so that they, they're reluctant to seek help. That reluctance often comes from fear and distrust, a reality that hits close to home for Jack and Bethany Gorney of Linwood, New Jersey. And I've been involved with survivors my entire life because my parents were survivors, and when we came to this country in 1949 and then moved to Vineland in 1950, uh, my entire childhood was surrounded by people who have been survivors. The picture here that I'm pointing to is my mother when she was 19 years old and living in Poland. I became very interested in it because I became the caregiver for Jack's mother, my mother-in-law, when she was about 84 and she moved to my community. I noticed that she was quite paranoid about any kinds of authority, very fearful, uh, very concerned, uh, about being kicked out of the apartment complex. Through research conducted by the Holocaust Resource Center at nearby Richard Stockton College of New Jersey and Jewish Family Service of Atlantic and Cape May counties, the South Jersey couple soon learned more than 100 survivors in their community also lacked the support system that so many others take for granted. As soon as I heard that, uh, Jack and I both decided we needed to start a fund to meet the needs, the unique needs of these people. They thought raising the money would be difficult, but the community quickly answered the call from the Gorneys and JFS by opening their hearts and their wallets. You know, we, we raised about $125,000 in a very short period of time. Uh, so we were very gratified that uh, the community uh, really was successful raising the money. In 1999, the Holocaust Survivors Fund was created. The fund was and continues to be administered by Jewish Family Service, an organization supported by the Jewish Federation of Atlantic and Cape May Counties. Jewish Family Service and Stockton's Holocaust Resource Center pride themselves on cooperatively meeting the needs of South Jersey Holocaust survivors. Together, they outreach to other agencies and organizations. And I think the, the Holocaust uh, is, a, uh, is a special obligation to make sure that we uh, educate our children uh, so that um, they understand uh, that evil exists and that they understand that uh, we have to be ever vigilant to make sure that, uh, that nobody is a perpetrator and nobody is a victim and, and uh, that, those, that those lessons are taught to future generations. It's, it's our role as a federation, as a community. And we began to talk about how we could do more for the survivors um, to get them help in terms of filing claims that they were entitled to. Uh, some of them get their properties back in Europe, some of them just to get, 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 get uh, the claims money that they were entitled to for having been in the camps. Um, to get them social services so they would become less isolated, to help them with filing paperwork and to provide a social environment that they would be comfortable in uh, instead of being isolated and suffering in silence at home. The silence was broken, the loneliness eased with luncheons prepared by Seashore Gardens Living Center. I will never forget that first meeting. We did not expect the crowd that we got. Loads of Holocaust survivors turned up for the meeting. 
People were excited and everybody went over and the question starts, where were you? Where did you uh, go through the war? Uh, are you here? Are you married? Do you have any children? Do you live here locally? So it was a very nice occasion. In fact, I met a couple of people who I didn't know that they are living in this area. And since then we became very close friends. It was moving. It was exciting because all of these people were gathered together uh, in one room in the Jewish Community Center. And um, they were thrilled to be together. They didn't all know each other. You would hear someone say, I know you, you're from Poland. Remember in my village, you lived near me? It was that kind of thing. Um, and it was just miraculous. You heard so, Yiddish being spoken. And there are some people here that are summer people. We're glad to see you, welcome back. It's just an immediate connection. And it makes you feel better because you meet with people that come from the other side. Yeah. You see each other, you, t you, everybody's telling you things, you know, that they remember from home. And we and bond, we bond with the other. Home and it feels survivors. very nice. It was a bond that prompted survivors to form their own committee to plan monthly luncheons, some of which have included second, third, and fourth generations of the same families, as well as other social activities. Because we felt that this is our luncheons and our meetings. Bus tours have taken survivors throughout New Jersey and beyond, including a trip to the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum in Washington, D.C. Many found the gatherings therapeutic and gained the confidence to seek out emotional support and other services provided by JFS. Those are, those are dinners and those are soups. I have more soups than dinners because they're supposed to. They deliver kosher meals, frozen, and deliver soups. I'm very grateful. I started this not because I didn't have much money left, because I couldn't cook no more. I'm old and my legs don't carry me no more. I fall a lot. This past summer, there was a play that has been prepared and hopefully will reach Broadway someday about the Warsaw Ghetto. Um, and their survivors and their families had the opportunity to hear some fabulous Broadway actors and singers uh, perform for them. And the amazing thing about it was that the actors themselves were very nervous about performing this in front of the survivors and didn't know what type of a reaction they would get. And it turned out to be a heartfelt, exciting reaction and one of a great appreciation. For survivors, new connections also provide comfort at the most solemn of times. When we come to the Yom HaShoah, it is like our memory. It's like our Kaddish because we don't know the date where our family was were killed. So this date of Yom HaShoah is our Iske. We see a lot of portraits from survivors. Some aren't here, some passed away, unfortunately. And uh, it's so beautiful to see their faces. They all look so young and happy. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't graduate high school in, you know, in Poland. We didn't have a chance. But the lifetime achievements of these survivors have not gone unnoticed. They were honored at this emotional ceremony. They, they gave us the diploma and it felt so good. <laughs> I was, this is my very, very valuable possession. I, sh I showed my children and my friends, I said, see, I have a diploma. I finally graduated. I didn't see anybody else crying but me, because I, I felt that we lost out and we never did have a chance to really get real, real diplomas. 
and that was a pity. But it was a small price to pay for the other things they did. The ultimate punishment that they did is the brutal annihilation of our six million people. So throwing us out of the schools is not so terrible. They did a lot worse, yes. But I, I thought it was really a nice thing to do. It was beautiful. In southern New Jersey, Holocaust survivors now know they have places to turn. They know there are people they can trust. And most of all, they know they are not alone. And the Holocaust survivors are like our families. If I am between Holocaust survivors, I feel good. I have something in common with them. We bond with, with the Holocaust survivors. <clears throat> We're friendly with everybody, especially when we get together for these luncheons. I, I think it's beautiful and we love it.